I provoked strong opinions. Are we ready? There's so much to talk about. Okay. I didn't grow up thinking about going into politics, but much to my surprise, was elected president of the Young Republicans. I got into law school. I thought, I'm gonna try to make a difference in people's lives. I took a class and I saw Hillary sitting there. And he was watching me. She closed her law book. I said, if you're gonna keep looking at me and I'm gonna keep looking back, we ought to know each other's names. I'm Hillary Rodham, who are you? She was different than anybody I ever met. I said, I really wanna marry you, but you shouldn't marry me. There is a set of expectations about a first lady. I violated them from the very beginning. She brought to the forefront women's roles in society. This is radical feminism. Me deciding to ask Hillary to become Secretary of State surprised people. Hillary's polarizing. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. People would run up clutching copies of that speech, reciting that line from it. Email. Email. Emails blew up. Bang. It played into all of the suspicions. She's so sketchy. Cold. Calculating. She could actually be crazy. There is this sense that she knows that she is an ethical, moral person, and that can blind anyone. You know, you get scarred up a little bit. It wasn't like I thought, how yeah, can I think about the most stupid thing I could possibly do and do it? I didn't want anything to do with him. Chelsea put herself between us and held both our hands. As long as she has been in public life, there have been these ups and downs. You know, be our champion, go away. You want to make a difference, you want to have an impact. Well then, you got to get in the arena. I'm Libby Hill, the TV Awards editor for IndieWire, and I'm here today to talk about Hulu's Hillary. Emmy nominated for outstanding documentary series, Hillary explores not just the life and legacy of former Secretary of State Hillary Rodham Clinton, but it serves as an insightful examination of the last 50 years of American politics and women's ongoing quest for equality. Joining me today to discuss the documentary series are esteemed director Nanette Burstein, whose work on the film On the Ropes earned her an Oscar nomination, and the woman herself, Secretary Hillary Rodham Clinton, the first woman in history to win the popular vote in an American presidential election. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Libby. It's great to talk to you again. Yes, I'm so excited. I'm going to mix things up a little bit today. And Nanette, I'm going to start with you. When you were first approached about this project, what was it that appealed to you? Have you always had an interest in politics? Were you kind of a political wonk or were you just a fan of Secretary Clinton? I think all of the above, frankly. Uh, yes, I have been a political junkie and I have been someone who's uh, followed and admired Secretary Clinton from the time she came on the national scene when I was a young pup trying to be a filmmaker <laughs> in like 22, <laughs> dating myself. And she became a, a very new kind of first lady that I admired. And then uh, she was the senator of my state and ran twice for president in which I voted for her. So yes, all of the above. So that first sit down to get the job of, of directing this documentary, is that intimidating? You know, oddly enough, uh, I know because I, I, I had never met Secretary Clinton before. And, and while I wanted to do this project and, and, and relish the thought of creating something amazing and thoughtful about her and her life, I just, you know, I never had the chance to meet her. So um, I, in, I was excited that, you know, regardless of whatever outcome was going to happen, that I, I was uh, interested in, in just sitting down and talking to her and had no idea what would come of it. In all seriousness, after 2016, um, it was heart wrenching for many of us. And I was still coming to terms with that. So, uh, you know, the idea of, of being able to perhaps partake in this project and sit down and, and speak to her at the very least was very welcoming opportunity. I can totally relate to all of those things. Secretary Clinton, you sat down with Nanette for 35 hours, like combing through the minutia of your own life. You are a famously private person. So what was that experience like? 
when uh, the idea of this project first was presented, it was going to be about the 2016 campaign. And uh, there was thousands of hours of footage that my team had taken behind the scenes. And that was going to be, we thought, sort of the core of a, a campaign documentary. Uh, so when Propagate, the production company, and Hulu uh, first decided they were interested in doing that, uh, they sent uh, a, several directors uh, to meet me to uh, see whether there was chemistry, because even on a campaign documentary, they, I knew they would be interviewing me as well as many other people. And I have to say, um, my, uh, my first encounter with Nanette was incredible incredibly positive. I, I loved her, her, you know, approach toward uh, the subject. And uh, I didn't have the choice uh, necessarily, but I could make a recommendation. So I told uh, Propagate and Hulu that, you know, if I were picking, I would certainly pick Nanette. So fast forward, Nanette spends months going through the thousands of hours of footage from the campaign. <clears throat> and then she comes back uh, to propagate Hulu and me and says, you know, there's a bigger story here. And it's really a story, not just about the campaign, but about your life, about how you fit into the women's movement of the last 50 years, how you fit into politics in our country, the increasing divisiveness of it. Um, and that's the film I'm interested in making. Well, you know, I wasn't running for anything. And um, I figured, well, you know, let's just do it. I really didn't know what I was getting into. I certainly had no idea I was going to be interviewed for 35 hours. But um, I, I said, okay. And in part because uh, from the very beginning, I, I found Nanette to be, you know, an incredibly intelligent, focused uh, uh, narrator about what she saw and what she was interested in. And off she went to make this documentary uh, that included, of course, my interviews, but so many more. And she did an amazing job, uh, once I finally saw it, of interweaving the personal with the political, with the public, with the historical, and came up with footage that I'd never seen or certainly didn't remember seeing, interviewed so many different people of different backgrounds and involvements with me. Um, so, you know, it, it was a, a, a really positive outcome from that first encounter uh, that we had. That's so great. After you watched it, did you feel like the documentary gave you a better sense, maybe not of yourself, but of where you fit in history? Well, I would probably leave that to others to uh, conclude, <laughs> Libby. But what it did do, because of the way that Nanette structured it, um, was to tie it all together that there were these connective threads that went through my life, went through women's lives, went through our politics. And I was, you know, the person who was at the center of the documentary, but it wasn't just about me, if that makes sense. It was a much right. bigger um, historical story. Um, I learned things from watching it. I, I find myself thinking back on it. Um, I love the reaction that it's gotten so many people have told me how uh, much they learned from it and how much they enjoyed watching it because of the way that Nanette structured it. Uh, so I, I think it stands the test of time, uh, both as a, uh, a story of my life, but more importantly, some of the issues we're still you know, struggling with. You know, as, as, as the three of us are talking, it's the day after um, Senator Kamala Harris has been named to the you know, presidential ticket with uh, Joe Biden, which, you know, was just an amazing, positive uh, step forward. And I know her, I've campaigned with her, I've campaigned for her. I'm, I'm really thrilled about her um, being uh, the vice presidential candidate. And I'm hoping that uh, the press and the public uh, will not be diverted and distracted and confused by having this vibrant, smart, uh, very charismatic, self-possessed uh, woman uh, running for vice president. I hope that, you know, that they will really see her as the experienced decision maker, executive, uh, you know, person that she is uh, and, uh, you know, be as excited as I am. Right. And trust me, 
I'm going to circle back to that. Um, <laughs> I do have questions about that. But, but before we move on, Nanette, the film weaves three distinct timelines together, the, the past, 2016, and the present. How do you, as a documentarian, structure that so that it becomes a, a cohesive story? Well, once, once I watched a lot of the footage from uh, the 2016 campaign, the behind the scenes, and found these really uh, what we call gems in filmmaking, just these great be unvarnished moments with Secretary Clinton and her staff that really revealed who she was and what she was going through in a very dramatic and pressure-filled time. You know, I knew I wanted to include those moments. Um, but I wanted the series to be about something much bigger. I wanted to tell her life story and I wanted to frame it within the arc of the women's movement. She was both influenced by and heavily influenced, you know, that movement. Um, and also our history of partisan politics, you know, which, you know, why do we become such a divided country, which if you follow, um, you know, the Clintons from the time that they came into the national spotlight and Hillary being a target of the right wing, you see how that unfolds. And so I thought that interweaving it, you know, you'd be able to both experience the unvarnished moments of the 2016 campaign from the get-go, plus you'd be able to make these thematic connections between the past and the present. Um, so it's really, uh, you know, both stories are actually told chronologically. You know, I, I tell 2016 chronologically and I tell her life story chronologically. So it's just a matter of finding the right transition, which you just work on in the edit room to make it feel seamless. It absolutely did. It just provided such a complete and, and well-rounded narrative. So uh, you nailed it. Um, but <laughs> so Secretary Clinton, as you said, Joe Biden uh, just announced that he was choosing Kamala Harris as his running mate. You seem to have some unique insights into what she may be facing as she enters this final leg of the campaign trail. Have you found yourself in a position where, you, where you've been able to offer some wisdom to Senator Harris? Well, I have talked with her several times, uh, and I got to know her uh, quite well. Her sister, Maya, was one of the uh, leaders of my 2016 campaign. In fact, she's in, you know, some of that, um, you know, back, back room uh, footage. I was very, um, you know, very eager to be as helpful as I could. Um, and I've talked to her throughout the campaign, both before she got in, during the campaign, and then uh, in these last uh, few weeks leading up to the, uh, the vice president's choice. I've talked to others as well. I've talked to anybody who calls me, obviously. Um, but I think that, um, you know, Kamala's choice is a historic one. It's incredibly significant for this time we find ourselves in. Uh, and I am very confident about her uh, campaigning skills, about her debate skills. Uh, the thing she has to be prepared for is the absolutely unfair torrent of attacks that will be directed at her. I mean, Trump has already started to call her his favorite name for prominent women, namely Nasty. Uh, so he is um, on the you know, on the trail of trying to uh, undermine her. Uh, I'm sure that his allies uh, in uh, right-wing media, the Russians and others will join in to uh, try to uh, add to his attacks. Uh, you really can't be prepared for that, Libby. I mean, it is so outrageous, the lies and, and the falsehoods of every sort that come at you. It's equally troubling that millions of people end up believing it. Uh, they, they share it in their Facebook feeds. They share it on Twitter. They are eager to embrace the most outlandish conspiracy theories. Uh, so I've, you know, I've made it as, as clear as I can that the campaign has to be better prepared than we were, very honestly, to uh, deal with those attacks. Uh, to try to refute even things you find ridiculous, like uh, the Trump campaign, uh, one of their uh, one of their arguments toward the end was that Pope Francis had endorsed Trump, and 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 again they fed that directly into people's 
uh, Facebook uh, accounts. And so the campaign and, and Kamala herself, you know, just have to be, you know, ready to, um, you know, fight back uh, when all of this uh, begins to um, uh, rain down on them. Right. Nanette, how did you get into documentary filmmaking? What was it about it that appealed to you? In high school, I was a huge cinephile and I was also a news junkie and I both wanted to be a journalist and a filmmaker. And then I figured out I could do this combine those two and have one profession. <laughs> so I figured that out. just economy. Yeah, it really was. I was like, oh, here we go. That works out well. Um, so I figured that out, you know, by the time I was going to college and pursued it young, you know, which is always very helpful. Um, so I right away started interning for a documentary series and got hired and ended up editing documentaries by the time I was in my early 20s. And, and wow. making my first film um, by the time I was in my mid twenties. But I mean, the thing is, is look, you know, documentaries are, they're ter ter terrific mediums in so many ways. I mean, first of all, you get to explore incredibly fascinating subjects um, that are really important to you. I mean, you pick the subjects you want to do. Um, and even if someone's offering you something, you do it because you really want to. And, and, um, but also there's a tremendous amount of creativity and and no one really understands what you're doing so they kind of just leave you alone and let you do it <laughs> it's a feature where there's a lot of cooks in the kitchen i've done both um uh and uh, you know at the end of the day i've just had so many uh really rewarding experiences being able to tell stories that really matter to me and this being you know certainly first and foremost i mean um this you know this encompassed the subjects that i care deeply about you know the, the women's rights equality um our broken pol politics our partisan politics uh so you know it was very rewarding being able to make a film like this libby i should also add that nanette has an amazing daughter a wonderful young woman <laughs> who um i've had the delight of meeting. And I, I really think, you know, a lot of uh, the energy for uh, this documentary uh, really was embodied in Nanette's understanding that we want to tell this story to the next generation because she's got the next generation, you know, literally uh, living with her. Um, you know, she came to those interviews with me with literally pages of single space typing of questions. I was a little intimidated, to be honest. I mean, you know, and and she was great at follow-ups. I mean, I, I would go off on, you know, some <laughs> jaunt in my talking and she'd bring it back. She, she really was one of the best interviewers uh, that I've have ever dealt with because sometimes, you know, directors are not the same as the people actually doing the interviewing as I've learned in documentaries, but you know, so she she really did um, just totally grasp the subject. But in talking to her about her daughter, I really felt like this was a labor of love for not just her, but for this next generation of young women who we want to be freer uh, from a lot of the, you know, the barriers and biases that we unfortunately are still dealing with. That's exactly right. I mean, my daughter... And her, all of her friends from school, all of her girlfriends, they were devastated when, when Secretary Clinton lost. And, you know, they, they didn't understand. They're like, why haven't we had a girl president? They just they couldn't get it. And why is this guy who they did not have a high opinion of from everything they'd seen, even at, I think she was eight years old at the time, but they, they could see that, the, you know, God, this guy does not seem, he seems the opposite of qualified. And, and yet here's this other woman who we love and admire. And so that reality for young girls was heart-wrenching to watch, you know, as a mom. And so, yes, I do want to help people understand our biases and what our problems are as a culture so that we change it for the next generation. And, you know, it's, it's a continuing conversation. One series, one film won't do it. You know, one election won't do it. But it, all of this 
it's, you know, it creates change, incremental change. So. Right. I think looking ahead to those generations is so important. Secretary Clinton, what do you hope your legacy is for those little girls picking up history books 20, 30, 40 years from now? When, when they read about Hillary Clinton, what do you hope they learn? Well, again, I'm probably not the right person to ask because I, I'm, I'm still trying to, you know, affect change and, and deal with a lot of what of I'm unhappy about, uh, worried about in the country and the world. But I do hope um, that I am one of those um, people that young women and girls uh, really think of when they uh, want to uh, chart a chart their own course, follow their own dream and ambition, a word that we should bring into the conversation because uh, right. it's applied to women as uh, a negative. It's never applied to men. And I want young girls to be ambitious and brave and ready to pursue whatever their interests might be. It doesn't have to be in politics. It can be in filmmaking or journalism or whatever um, and ignites their passion and, you know, their, their feeling of uh, fulfillment and purpose. Uh, and, you know, what I've tried to do is to live my life in that way and obviously to lift other, uh, others up, women and girls, not only here in America, but around the world. Um, because, you know, I just know that uh, the rights uh, and opportunities of girls and women is the great unfinished business uh, of the 21st century. And this year we're sub celebrating the 19th Amendment. It's been 100 years since women got the right to vote in the Constitution. Um, but we know that for a lot of women, black women, brown women, Native American women, Asian uh, American women, uh, it wasn't real. It wasn't uh, really exercised or executed until the Voting Rights Act happened. And I want young women to know that when the, the struggle for suffrage started in the middle of the 19th century, many of the women and men uh, who were on the front lines fighting for the vote never lived long enough to see it happen. Uh, it was a 70 year struggle. Um, and you should see yourself uh, as not only working to fulfill your own personal ambition and dream, but also to try to bring others along and to make a difference in opening doors for other people. That's really, you know, to me, how progress gets made, this kind of relay race of progress where, you know, one generation, one group is handing it off to the next. And I hope, you know, that um, in the future, not just girls and women, but, you know, men and boys and everybody uh, will see this relay race of progress as something they want to be part of and that, you know, I did my part and they can do their part as well. Right, right. Uh, Nanette, once the audience has sat down and, and watched the documentary, <clears throat> what is it that you hope they take away from it? Uh, well, I know some things that they take away from it because I still get emails. Um, <laughs> all, you know, and people are still like, oh, I watched your Hillary documentary. And I get these incredibly impassioned, thoughtful emails or phone calls from people, uh, which I never grow tired of. I, you know, I don't know what that says about me. But um, <laughs> people, you know, just this morning I got one. And, you know, it, it's you know, other than the emotional description of what they, you know, I laughed, I cried, it was better than cats kind of thing. They say, <laughs> um, first of all, the one thing I get across the board is I have a completely different understanding of Hillary Clinton as a person and a politician. And I think that it's very hard when you're in public life to translate who you are. You know, there's this criticism that Secretary Clinton has gotten that, you know, people don't know who she really is. And part of that is her having to protect herself from years of scar tissue having to be built up. Can you watch in the series why all of the attacks that she's endured? Some of it is just our system and the way that the sound bites are you know, are, are both elicited and conveyed to the public. So, you know, it's, it's satisfying to me that people have this new understanding of someone who's been so important to our history. Um, and I think that also people, when you see the accumulation <laughs> over 40 years of what uh, 
Secretary Clinton has both pushed for and endured, and so much of it, you know, not all of it, but so much of it has to do with her gender, you, you really start to get an understanding and not just an intellectual level, but an emotional level of what women have to go through and what they've gone through and what they're still going through and what, you know, uh, our current politicians are going to be going through for the next generation. Um, uh, so I think that really comes across to people. Secretary Clinton, I have one more question for you and then, then we'll take a couple audience questions. As someone who was also raised in the Methodist Church, I am always very moved when you uh, speak about the quote um, that's been attributed to John Wesley, uh, do all the good you can by all the means you can and all the ways you can. What does that look like for you now that you have transitioned away from, from being a public servant? I still think of myself as a public servant, even though I'm not currently holding any public office or obviously running for one, because I, I really think that's part of being um, a citizen. Uh, you know, democracy is, we're finding quite fragile. If people do not uh, trust one another, if they do not listen to one another, if they do not try to come together to make uh, honorable, necessary compromise to move uh, forward toward problem solving. Uh, and I, I think more of us need to, frankly, illustrate what good citizenship means right now, because our democracy is in trouble. Uh, we have a leader and those who are uh, enabling him, both in the administration and in the Congress and the courts, uh, who wants to short circuit democracy. He wants to, you know, just undermine the rule of law and institutions. And he wants to be as close to a, a dictator as he possibly can get, telling people how they're supposed to act and behave, even how they're supposed to, you know, be treated for the, you know, COVID-19 virus. It's really terribly distressing. And so I've started a group called Onward Together. Uh, what we do is support the next generation of political leadership uh, particularly women and people of color. Uh, we help them, uh, you know, raise money and help people run for office and put together campaigns and also take on some very difficult uh, cause-related issues. Like one of our, our, our partner groups, Color of Change, is in the forefront of trying to uh, make the case against Facebook profiting off of hate. Uh, so we're very involved in supporting candidates and in supporting causes. And I'm also now incredibly worried about and therefore focused on our whole voting apparatus. And I, I'm convinced that Trump believes the only way that he can win is by limiting the number of people who vote. Uh, and that includes undermining mail-in voting to the extent of subverting the post office, which is just an unbelievable and outrageous abuse of power. So I've teamed up with lawyers to bring lawsuits uh, against states and localities that are trying to limit the vote, whether it's by making it difficult to vote by mail or cutting the number of places you vote. So I'll be incredibly active on all of that, plus supporting candidates, um, supporting Joe and, and Kamala, of course, uh, and doing everything I can to try to help save our country, because I honestly think uh, that's what's at stake coming up in November. Absolutely. So we have some questions from the audience, which is very exciting. Eliza wonders if you have thoughts on Kate McKinnon's impersonation. Of you. <laughs> I thought Kate did an amazing job impersonating me. And I had so much fun when I was on Saturday Night Live with her and we did the bartender uh, skit where I was the bartender named Val and, and she was me. It really was a lot of fun. And there's some of that in the documentary. But I also have to confess to just being devastated emotionally by uh, Kate's, um, uh, you know, playing Hallelujah and singing it um, uh, the Saturday after the election. That was you know, just uh, really, really got me. But she's become a friend of mine and she's an amazingly talented person. That's so true. Luis is wondering what speech of yours you would most like to be remembered by? 
probably the speech that I gave 25 years ago in Beijing uh, about women's rights being human rights. It's the speech that has been most reprinted. Uh, it's been you know, shouted back at me. Uh, lines from it are on T-shirts and mugs. Uh, and I think it, it helped to frame the debate about uh, women and girls uh, for the last 25 years. Right. One more from Hilda. She is wondering who you think the best TV or film politician is. And she adds that her vote is Leslie Nope. Amy's a wonderful, you know, she's, an, she's another person who uh, has impersonated me on Saturday Night Live. And I've gotten to know her over the years. And I think she's just an incredible um, presence and uh, as an actress, a producer, everything that she does now. Uh, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a pretty good uh, uh, bet because her, her character really evolved during the series and uh, she took on a lot of the problems that uh, a woman in politics, even at the level of, you know, city council and the parks and recreation department have to take on. And I thought it was, you know, a pretty fair rendering of uh, what, what that is like for women uh, who, you know, raise their hand and say, you know what, I'd like to run for office too. Ladies, thank you again so much for chatting with me today. It was honestly just a joy. Thank you so much. I've really enjoyed um, having these conversations with you. All four episodes of Hillary are available to stream on Hulu right now.